Hello everybody, welcome to another lesson by me, Miss Pythagoras. In this lesson, I will explain typical questions you can expect in the exam. This is lesson 5 of 5. Have you subscribed yet? You can also visit my website. The link is in the comments below. There you will find all the chapters in the syllabus. Let's start with the exam questions. Now this is a typical calculus question. You can see on number 1, 1 1.1, differentiate using first principles. Question 2, find the equation of the tangent. And then question 2 will be where you will use the rules of differentiation. Let's do the question. Question 1. Given f of x is equal to 1 minus 3x squared, differentiate f from first principles. So when you do first principles, that's the formula that you will use. And remember, the formula is on the formula sheet. On the right hand side, you have to do fx plus h. That means everywhere where you see an x, you substitute x plus h. And then you must be careful, you have to wait with the 1 minus 3, and we will deal with the x plus h first by writing it as two brackets, foiling it out, and then in this step, I will multiply in the negative 3. And then it becomes 1 minus 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3h squared. Back into our formula, the limit h tends to 0, and then everything that I wrote there was what f x plus h was. Then there's the minus the function as it was given to you. Minus bracket 1 minus 3x squared. The next step I will multiply in the minus. It becomes all of that. And then this part is minus 1 plus 3x squared. Now you can add like terms. 1 minus 1 is nothing, minus 3x squared plus 3x squared is nothing. And you're left with the limit, h tends to 0, of minus 6xh minus 3h squared over h. Then, in the next step, you will take out h as a common factor, and you can say h and h will cancel. And you're left with the limit, h tends to 0, of minus 6x minus 3 times h. Now, you will substitute in h's place 0, and you're left with minus 6x minus 3 times 0, which is 0. Therefore, the derivative is minus 6x. Question 1.2 says, Determine the equation of the tangent to f at x is equal to negative 2. Now we are working towards y is mx plus c, the equation of the tangent. We will start with the function and then we will find the derivative. And the derivative there will be minus 6x since the derivative of a constant is 0 and the derivative here. 2 will go to the fun front, it finds minus 3, multiply with it, and we subtract 1. So the derivative is minus 6x. Remember, derivative means the gradient of the tangent, and the point is minus 2. Therefore, in x's place, into the gradient, we can substitute negative 2, and then negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. That's the gradient. In the next step, we still need to find the corresponding y value where x is equal to negative 2. And we'll find that by substituting negative 2 into the original equation. In goes negative 2, 1, minus 3, bracket, negative 2 squared. And then you can say negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then 1 minus 3 times 4 leaves you with 1 minus 12, which is minus 11. So the coordinate is the point 
minus 2, minus 2 and minus 11. Now for the tangent, we go back to y is equal to mx plus c. We know the gradient is 12, we calculated it and we will use the point minus 2, minus 11 to substitute into the equation to find c. In y's place, minus 11 equals 12 times negative 2 plus c. Minus 11 equals 12 times negative 2 is negative 24 plus c. Let's work out c. Minus 24 walks across. Minus 11 plus 24 is c's value is 13. Therefore, the equation of the tangent is y is equal to 12x plus 13. Question 2 says evaluate and then they want us to find the derivative. But remember, we can't find the derivative when there's a brackets. We first have to multiply out the brackets. So let's foil it out. We will say 1 times 1 is 1. Your two middle terms will be minus x to the half. Your two outer terms will be minus 2x to the minus a half. And then your last term will be a minus times a minus is a plus. 1 times 2 is 2. And then what happened there was I used the rules of exponents. I said x to the half times x to the minus a half. When you multiply, you add exponents. And then a half minus a half is 0. And then there's the 2 in front. And remember, anything to the 0 is 1. So in fact, there is a 2. And now when you find the derivative, the derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of 2, the constant, is 0. So we will only zoom in on this term and that one. Let's start with the first one. When we find the derivative there, the half will go to the front and it becomes minus a half. You go back to the exponent and you subtract 1. Therefore, on the exponent, a half minus 1 is minus a half. And that is indeed the answer. If you want to write your answer with positive exponents, you can by taking the x to the minus a half down and it becomes x to the half. And if you really want to, you can write x to the half as minus a half over root x. The second term, to find the derivative there, the minus a half will go to the front. And it finds the minus 2 that's already there. Back to the exponent, we subtract 1. So it's minus a half minus 1. Then we can say a minus times a minus is a plus and the 2 and the 2 will cancel and then on the x the exponent minus a half minus 1 is minus 1 and a half which is also minus 3 over 2 and that's the answer if you want to you can write it with positive exponents and then that thing becomes 1 over x to the positive 3 over 2 and if you really want to you can write that one as 1 over the square root of x cubed. Number 2.2, evaluate. And they want us to find the derivative dy over dp if y is equal to p to the 3 plus 1 over p plus 1. Now, you cannot find the derivative when it's in that form you first have to factorize the numerator. So when you factorize the numerator, it becomes bracket p plus 1, bracket p squared minus b plus 1. And then you can say p plus 1 and p plus 1 can cancel, and you're left with y is equal to p squared minus b plus 1. And this is the equation that you will factor. Uh, differentiate. So you will say dy over dp. So what happened was you take the 2 to the front, it becomes 2p 
you subtract 1 on the exponent. So the answer is just do B. On the second term, there is an invisible 1. The 1 goes to the front, which is this one, and then you subtract 1, and then you end with P to the 0, which is just 1. Therefore, it's minus 1. And then the plus 1, the derivative of a constant, is 0. I also want to explain this question to you. Find the derivative of f of x is equal to 1 over x using first principles. Now, the first thing you have to do is write down the formula from the formula sheet. And then on the right hand side, f of x is 1 over x. Therefore, f x plus h is equal to 1 over x plus h. And that's what you're going to substitute in your sum. So the limit h tends to 0. In f x plus h's place, you substitute 1 over x plus h minus and the function as it was given 1 over x, everything over h. Then in the next step, you want to add those two. So now you have to find the LCD and the LCD is x bracket x plus h. And then this term you have to multiply by x and this term you have to multiply by x plus h. But remember there's a minus so you have to add a bracket. In the next step I will multiply in the minus and I'm left with the limit h tends to 0 x minus x minus h over the LCD x x plus h everything over h. Then x and minus x can cancel and I'm there. Now in the next step what I will do is do you agree this everything is over h and if you write it like this in a linear form you end with minus h over x x plus h divide by h over 1 and then you can turn the, the division into a multiplication sign but then the h over 1 you will use the reciprocal and it becomes 1 over h then you can say h and h will cancel and you left with minus 1 on the numerator and then at the bottom here on the denominator I said x times x is x squared and x times h is x h. Then I can do the limit part. The limit h tends to 0. So that means in h's place I will substitute 0. And remember x times 0 is 0. And then your final answer, the derivative there is minus 1 over x squared. This is the end of Calculus Basics. Remember, there's more on calculus. In the left-hand corner, if you click on that lesson, that one will take you straight to the playlist Calculus Introduction, where I explain the factor remainder theorem and how to factorize a cubic polynomial. On the right-hand side, there you will find the playlist on Calculus the Cubic Function. The first uh, video there in the right hand corner, that is how to find stationary points. And then in that playlist, playlist, you will also find how to find the equation of the cubic function, the different scenarios. And then there's also the calculus application playlist. This is Ms. Pythagoras signing off. Till next time.